at some point in the movie that Bill Fechner is going to paint a tunnel on a brick wall. Yes! <laughs> Brunch! Hit it, boys! Today's episode is brought to you by Brunch. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch, where we make things and get things to make things. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. I wasn't going to do that, but you said we got to talk about uh, the old Duddigs. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the fact that you had to clean your podcast shoes before today's episode. I didn't successfully. I didn't successfully clean them because I don't have the the stuff to do it. But I noticed. I don't know what kind of operation you're running here, but my podcast shoes are dirty. I have not touched your podcast shoes once, nor have I created after a the, mess in the studio. After the first conversation we had about the podcast shoes, if there were to be betting odds on is Pete going to touch the podcast shoes, it would be yes minus. Four hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, like I, I did touch them the first. The, I have not touched them since the week that they were introduced, because the week that they were introduced, I moved them from the corner of the room in which you just they were strewn about. They were not strewn. They were strewn. They were just tucked. <laughs> is strewn how you say that? Or is I don't it know. That that's one of those things where t- truly, I'm a famously, I'm a helper. Where if somebody, I would say you're a, a, a stickler. Stickler, whatever, but I help people. Uh, a friend of the podcast, won't say who, got pretty mad at me recently because they made uh, they they needed help with a word, and they didn't know what they needed help with the word. And I said, "Hey, here's that help. Here's actually the the word <laughs> the they, unsolicited they, help. Yeah, which is fucking great." I and I said to him, "I said, Jeff, uh, I kn- I was gonna say, can I guess who it is? Yeah. And I was gonna guess Jeff. I said, Jeff, it's like if." You have something in your teeth. I'm going to tell you you have something so, in your teeth. That's the thing. I'm not going to let you continue about your day. So uh, our our dear friend Tyler Milliken yeah. uh, tweeted the word compliment today. Ah, uh, wrong one. Wrong one. That's a and homonym. I, and I re- and I really wanted to respond, like for his own benefit, to be like, that's not not the right use of the word. But you you come off as like a real asshole if you do it on Twitter. Yes. The move is to like text him and be like, "Hey, wrong, wrong usage." I t- I'm in a group text where it's okay enough. Where I recently said to a friend of the podcast, um, a different friend of the podcast, in the group text, I said, "Scott, what's going on with the apostrophes?" <laughs> and yeah, that's a good way to get under your skin. You hate the wrong use of apostrophes. Which Dylan and I are about. both like, like we feel like the only members of a what's going on <laughs> club. And then there was a TikTok recently that someone directed to uh, both me and uh, a friend of the podcast, a different one. And when they sent it to Dylan and I, we were like, "Yes, thank you." And the person was basically explaining, like, "Hey, here's when you use." Uh, an apostrophe to make something plural like never and it, right. it is only for singular letters so Oakland uh, A's yeah so I was gonna say like it's we haven't talked about the fact that the A's uh, have an apostrophe which it's correct like, yeah but it is like weird you know I, mean, I would always be like watch it yeah right and uh, I sent the tweet like uh, last week when they the Braves came out with the the A mm-hmm. uniform and it just makes it look like the A's belong to the uh, Atlanta Braves now. I didn't get it. So you sent me that, and you, I was like... You didn't get it? I expected you would be the first person in the world to get that. I was like, he, he isn't funny after all. Because <laughs> like you, you, were, you were like, this is a banger, but no one's going to get yeah. it. And like that's right up my alley. Yeah, right. Was How like, did you not get that? It's not funny, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's funny now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think Dylan would like it too. Okay, uh, I'll send that to him after the episode. So anyway, how did we get on uh, what a good friend I am and how I help Jeff. people with stuff like that? Um, but uh, uh, podcast shoes, yeah, podcast shoes and str- oh, like so. Despite Strewn me about, being yeah. a helper with stuff like that, if I don't know what it is, like strewn, strewn or whatever, if I've got the time, I'm gonna look it up and then I'm going to start implementing it. So. I've now got that club in my bag, and I'll be unlikely to make the error. However, if I don't know how to use it, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to abstain. Okay. And that's why there's been a lot of stuff like that where 
whether it's a grammatical thing or a word or something like that, I'll find a workaround because I'd rather not make the mistake. Although there, of course, is benefit in making the mistake. Hopefully, there will be a friend or somebody who will say like, hey, I remember when I was uh, in high school, I, speaking of homonyms, I misused phase. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so glad I did because I was like, I'll never make that mistake again. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> I got this knowledge at 13. Watch the fuck out. And then I remember uh, I used phased, F-A-Z-E-D, correctly in my college essay. And my friend, uh, not going to say who it is. Ooh, the best is when they think that they got you. I, oh, you sweet little boy. I used to <laughs> love uh, incorrect correctors is what I would call them. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, friend, doesn't matter who, is reading it and jesse says oh you spelled phase wrong and i said oh jesse in fact i didn't <laughs> and boy did uh i'm sure jesse loved that it phased her <laughs> it phased no 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 she was like oh right it is and it was she actually handled it very well jeff could learn a thing or two <laughs> from from jesse uh succession was good this week huh? no uh I mean, how do you clean your shoes? Do you do magic the eraser? Magic er- yeah, so that's I oh, don't have a magic eraser. You don't? I got not, one here. Not here. Uh, well, I got one here. Uh-huh. I got several here if you want to borrow one. I would love to actually keep... Uh, we'll give you a podcast eraser. People don't know this about me. I bring a bag with me if I'm bringing like, my laptop someplace. Yeah. Do you use a magic eraser on your laptop? No. Okay. <laughs> I could stand to, though. I feel like it, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. There's been a lot of... I tried to force it into the meme world. Didn't do great, but... I feel like gross laptop has become like a hot topic. Yeah, John like, Feidelberg. Feidelberg. Did, yeah. So I did one last week. Feidelberg did one this week. I hit him with the one of us <laughs> gif. And, and everyone's got a gross laptop. But you don't notice it until you take it to a coffee shop. Until it hits the And like the you're facing weird. a window and yeah. stuff. And then it, I, you know this about me. I, I'm, I'm an enormous, especially in uh, fun employment. I'm an enormous coffee shop guy. Yeah. All I'm doing now is bringing the the laptop to a coffee shop. I know. And I wish stuff. I wasn't so fucking like lazy or like such a homebody because I feel like I I, I have like the soul of a coffee coffee shop guy, but I just don't have like the energy or the the motivation of the coffee shop guy. You know who I've become is the the husband in Easy. Yeah, the one he's like always like working on a play or something. Yeah. Where like he's doing work and it's not like. All due respect to this guy. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> like, it, it, it's, it's not like needed that second. Yeah. Like the, he actually gets in a fight with his wife about it. He's like, no, I can't watch the kids today. I have to go work on the play. And she's like, well, you don't like have to. There isn't a deadline on this. Uh, I'm, But I've become that guy where I'm just like at the coffee shop working away. Someone comes over and they're like, hey, sorry to interrupt. They might not necessarily be interrupting. <laughs> You've been like, like axe to the grindstone you've been talking about like you need to take like a break yeah i'm scheduling a hashtag uh just uh hashtag take a break justin <laughs> week you might be the only person in like the history of humanity that's had to take a break from unemployment it's hard man uh, like aside from like financial reasons like you're working so hard in unemployment that you're like ah fuck i need to oh no please if i got a job right now i'd be like fucked yeah, because you're committed to all the other things that you're doing. Yeah, can't do it. No thanks. <laughs> Just going to see how long I can get away with this rock style um, of leading. We've got uh, some some movie stuff that we got to talk about in this episode. Uh, ben Affleck has a new movie. We're going to uh, air is going to be at the end. Our air review is going to be at the end of this episode. It's been on YouTube for a few days now. So uh, if you want, usually that's what's going to happen from here on out. We're going to put the the movie reviews on YouTube first, and it'll live there for a few days, and then they'll be included at the end of episodes. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash at listen to brunch. Uh, air will be at the end of this episode. You can find the timestamps in the episode description. We're going to start doing that more frequently as well. Uh, there was also the Barbie trailer that came out today. Did you get a chance to watch that? I didn't. I've only been watching the uh, hypnotic trailer on, on loop. I'll tell you this. Um, you're not watching the Barbie trailer, you know exactly as much about the Barbie movie as I do after I watch the Barbie trailer because oh. I don't know what the fuck that movie is about. I mean, it seems like it's a real, it's a real uh, get out where the less you know going in, 
the better because I think that Barbie's okay. going to be. You know how Gerwig gets yeah. the twists and turns that are going to be right. in that one. Yeah. Was, so I, I'm I'm trying to go in as blind as possible. It's already been spoiled uh, to, to me that uh, Barbie's white. Mm-hmm. So well, I there's plenty of Barbies and some of them aren't oh, white. Right. Uh, right. I just I was making a Margot Robbie joke, I guess, but she is famously white. Yeah. How do you think that reporter feels about uh, Margot Robbie being in this movie? Uh, probably doesn't have enough lines. She's gonna grill. Uh, she's gonna grill Gerwig. <laughs> Although I will say, uh, I think one of the very first shots of the trailer is Margot Robbie's feet. Ah. She gets. She steps out of her Barbie heels, and her foot is shaped the exact same way, which is like a, I don't know if you how much you know about Barbie. Mm. You play with those as kids. I tried, and I, I remember even like actively making the like trying to decide like, hey, I'm going to be a Barbie guy. Like, why why couldn't I play with Barbies if I wanted? I did, and a I went bit. and I like grabbed a Barbie, and I was like, Ken's got no dick, not it's for a fucking me. Fucking person, <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like the the how you can like f- like have the feet on a swivel, mm-hmm. and you slide them into the shoes. Then when you pull them out, the feet stays in that. Ah. That shape. So they did that in the trailer, which I thought was kind of kind of neat. But goddamn Margot Robbie in the obsession with her feet can't can't get, go to a new director and escape that. So then this hypnotic trailer is just screaming at us because there's the Quentin Tarantino connection because Hypnotic is directed by Robert Rodriguez, who famously directed From Dusk Till Dawn. That's like what I know Robert Rodriguez for. I know that humans know him for Sin City in mm-hmm. those movies. I'm like, oh shit. The guy who made the crazy George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino starred vampire movie where he sucks on, Quentin Tarantino sucks on, uh, I forget whose toes, but a famous actress like puts her duddigs in Tarantino's mouth. Uh, I spent quite a day for him. This feels truly... This feels like 97 through 01 again. I was going to say... With like, the like, Affleck stuff. It's, it's like... What you are you talking about? Like this movie in particular, or like Affleck's uh, uh, like popularity his right now? His second movie, uh, workload. His second oh, movie okay. of the say. year comes out next month. So he's got two movies coming out in two months. He's got three movies coming out this year because he's doing another DC one. He's done ten movies in the last three years. This is like ninety seven through oh one Affleck, where he's just in stuff. And some of it's going to be awesome. And some of it, you're going to say, yeah, well, what do you want from him? In that, friends, is how I like my Affleck. Yeah, I like him keeping on keeping us on his toes. I don't necessarily know if I want him to become like a full prestige uh, pers- persona in uh, in Hollywood. I will say the, uh, the hypnotic trailer looks very bad. We must have been watching different things. It looks so bad, dude. I was going to say, because you, you were like, it looks like it's straight out of 97 to 01. It, this trailer looks like it's straight out of that time period as well, because it like has that weird, dark, like what seven going on? Grade, color grading. And like, yeah, the like the, the reality is not your real reality. Like Bill Fickner's in it, which... Uh, not to be, no, I definitely don't want to be disrespectful to, to Bill yeah. Fickner, but like he's, he was much more popular around that time than recently. All right. I don't know what Pete watched. Let me tell you about <laughs> this trailer, Hypnotic. It's directed by Robert Rodriguez. It opens on you see Ben Affleck and uh, he plays a dad who clumsily uh, misplaces his daughter. It happens. And bad guys end up with the daughter. Mm-hmm. Bill Fickner plays a what they call a hypnotic and he is a bad guy who hypnotizes people to do bad things for him and that is the best premise for a movie ever and i can't believe it didn't already exist he is a bad guy who hypnotizes people. That absolutely to, does exist. But he's no like he he's going up to strangers. He goes up to a stranger and he says, "Man, it's like a fur it's as hot as a furnace out here. <laughs> she gets up and then she goes and she does a crazy thing. She walks into traffic or something and it's like we got a we got a bad hypnotist on the loose. <laughs> I love I I feel like people are getting back to basics with their <laughs> movies. They're like, "Okay, so uh, what's this the movie is a real regression. What, what no no like what what's the bad guy going to be? All right, what if we take a guy and he's a magician? <laughs> like awesome. <laughs> awesome. And there's quicksand and 
There's anvils. Like, yes, yes, yes. They're, they, 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 at some point in the movie, that Bill Fechner is going to paint a tunnel on a brick wall. Yes. <laughs> God. Good. <laughs> Love this movie. <laughs> I am so, you think I'm kidding just because I'm laughing with a little menacing grin. I am so in. You should, I would read you, uh, you writing about this movie on a website and to start that website, you could, uh, go to Squarespace Oh, because Squarespace, uh, is, makes it very easy for any, any dope on the internet can go make a, uh, a very nice website that has plenty of functionality um Squarespace, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online stand out with a beautiful website engage with your audience and sell anything products content you create even your time uh we've we've played around with Squarespace a little bit it's very cool because it allows you to do uh like video stuff uh, allows you to have like appointment scheduling. You can have booking if you've got clients or something. We don't got booking or anything, not yet at least, but uh, very easy social media connections on, on the websites, gives you easy access to analytics. And like I said, really good for video stuff as well. Uh, head to uh, squarespace.com slash brunch for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code brunch to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash brunch free trial. And then if you decide that you want to commit, use promo code brunch and you'll save 10% off your purchase of the website or domain. This that gave me such an incredible idea for a podcast that I'm not going to say now. I'll say to you probably after the the podcast, but the Squarespace, like you can build a website that gave me a brilliant idea that I've written down and we'll touch on it later. Did you know, I learned this today, that CVSs by law cannot be two floors or not, not cannot be two floors. That's not, cannot, yeah, no, that's, no they, they can be, yeah, they, yeah. they can I have, have been in a multi floor CVS, but it was, it had a downstairs. It didn't go up, right? No, it went up. No, no, no. It was did. in New York City. Uh, maybe it started, was it in like a mall or something like that? No, it was like on the corner. It was a big CVS and it was a two floor CVS. All right. Okay. Although I would check here, that. Here's it, they may have been able to uh, like skirt whatever law you're about to, to yep. drop on me because it was more of like a second floor loft. Like it wasn't a second full floor. Uh, it was like you go up on a stair and like you can look over down to the bottom floor. Interesting. Something about the land deals that the uh, Goldstein brothers and Ralph <clears throat> Hoagland, the founders of CVS, something about the land deals that they made a bajillion years ago. It's like some shit out of the founder was uh, essentially the end result of the deal. And it was so they wouldn't uh, like make more off of buying the land for cheap than and like increase the value of whatever uh, they could do something downstairs, but they couldn't like stack up something, which is why it, it blew my mind because. When I see freestanding CVSs, I've never been like, it's like a, some targets you can go upstairs and everything. Yeah. But typically, whenever there's a two floor CVS, I'm not saying I don't believe what you're saying. Maybe there's some exceptions in certain cities or whatever, but it usually it'll go downstairs, but not up. And it's a legal thing. Kind of mm -hmm. crazy. Interesting. Yeah. I did see like the nicest CVS in the world. I want to say it was in um, Fort Lauderdale. I believe um, where it was like clearly a very nice building and or like a bank or something. And then CVS took it over and then just slapped their logo on top of it. It was like a prestige building with the CVS logo on it. CVS has been has kind of gotten to be the Panera of convenience stores. Mm, I don't know if I believe that I mean, all like, convenience stores are CVS never really lets me down. Now. Oh man, a the, I mean the the vibes in CVS it's, the are vibes are horrible. bad. The vibes are bad, but like you always get what you want. Very you want to you want to get in and out as fast as possible, but, but you, you don't do, get in and out. Well, the the organization is could be much. They don't better. have any employees there anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. not like so like Best Buy is starting to get this way where there's fewer and fewer people there. That's Best Buy fine. we talked about like you go in and there's like 18 people and they're like want to hang out and you can <laughs> hang out with them if you want. I don't want to do that. CVS. There is nothing. That's fine. I'm 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 a self service machine. I can if I can't find it, I blame myself. Where I'd rather do that than blame the store and leave without something that I wanted. 
You know what's a major inconvenience for me at CVS uh, and uh, like Target? This happens sometimes where I'll go to the self checkout, uh, ready to pay with cash, and it'll say this machine debit is only. debit and credit only. And I say, what do you mean? What? A, but I was planning on paying with cash. Said no one ever. You don't need to say that. Who? No one was pl- planning on paying with cash. Yeah, I mean, if I was, I don't, I don't usually walk into CVS with paper, but I sure walk out with paper with those receipts. You, buy, oh. you see how long those receipts are? I thought you were saying you were buying paper there. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you buy all sorts of stuff there. <laughs> CVS is expensive. You know that dog? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. expensive dog. Not to me. I'm rich. Um, <laughs> Speaking of of rich guys, hmm. we ben watched Affleck is doing. <laughs> that's right. All we, these movies. Hope they're hope he's getting paid. Hope, hope that the artist's equity is. We watched uh, Tetris. Mm-hmm. That movie on Apple Plus. Is it in theaters or is it straight to Apple Plus only? Don't say it's straight to oh, Apple. Shit. That makes Apple it sound, TV. That Sorry. Don't make it. Don't say straight to Apple TV. That makes it sound like it couldn't be in theaters. This is a. Don't that's, stream it's, shame. It's not. It's not a. It's not a disparaging comment. It's. It's literally factual. It yeah, went but straight it sounds. You know. You know what you're doing. It sounds like straight to video, which became a straight to DVD thing or I straight to on demand. This could have been in theaters if it wanted. Don't put words in my mouth. This could have been in theaters if it wanted. It, it featured a master class acting performance from Taron Egerton, <laughs> and that's generous. It was. And Tom Hanks reprised his role as Colonel Tom Parker. Yeah, dude, that's one of my notes. Really? Yeah, one of my notes. So is, distracted. Yes, that dude is terrible. He, but he was exactly Tom Hanks yes. in the Elvis movie. Uh, Tetris is. We're not doing the full fledged big review of this, so uh, we're kind of raw dogging it. But Tetris is about the guy who came across Tetris, wanted to buy Tetris, wanted to market it, wanted to sell it, wanted to get Nintendo involved, all these things. But because it was made by a dude in Russia, there were all these hoops to jump through, a lot of conspiracies. And someone had tipped us off yeah. at the air at the uh, air screening that like, hey, so I watched the Tetris movie. That thing is bonkers. It's a spy thriller. Yeah, it's a Russian like, spy thriller. What? Yo, it is. And I I'll, would not have watched that movie if I didn't get that one sentence review from that guy at outside of air. I didn't know it existed until that guy said that. And I was so excited. Just the idea of a movie called Tetris starring Taron. Yeah. Notice I just did the thing. Is it Egerton or Edgerton? I think it's like Edgerton, right? Let's see. Um, give- but the, the so how I, it, it falls in the same category as air, which you'll hear me say this exact line. It falls into the genre of movie that I love where it's, Hey, does this really need to be made? Edgerton. Edgerton. Yeah. yeah. Uh, d- Hey, does this, does this really deserve to be made? Does this really need to be made? You got to stop doing that. You've been doing that recently. I just said that I've yeah. been, I did the last two movies hey, that we've got, done. Got to stop doing it. Why? Because then we're not going to get a bunch of like ridiculous fucking movies. You think Cold Pursuit needed to be made? I'd be yes. dead without that movie. No, but I'm I'm talking about like in terms of like true stories, quote yeah. unquote true stories, like the, like the origin story of Tetris. Do we fucking need that? The answer is yes, because that story is <laughs> fucking crazy, and I'm so glad that I watched it. And now I know. Like I'm scared to look up to see how much is actually true. Versus how much was was for dramatic effect because it literally was a spy thriller. This this didn't have my uh, full attention because I watched it in chunks. Yeah. So each time I picked it up, I would do the thing where I'd start from like five minutes before yeah. where I left off. But it's still That's a terrible way to watch. It's a movie. Th- yeah, it was not by choice. Uh, but it ends up not being a very fluid watch, and you end there ends up being chunks where you're kind of foggy. But each time. Like eat, so I watched it in three chunks, and each time it would click again for me. I was so freaking locked in mm-hmm. because it was really, really interesting. And it's a lot of like, it's a it's a big leaning on people movie. There's not a ton of violence, but there's a lot of like, we're gonna there's a lot of intellectual warfare. We're gonna hang around your family a little bit. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna lean on you a little bit, and that stuff, man, that'll give you a little rumbly in your tumbly. <laughs> That is a that is a little scary movie. I um I I quite rated this movie. Um I I had a Same. really really good time. I don't I don't think it's like a perfect movie by any means. I don't think it's gonna enter into any award show discussions. But it it was a very fun time, and it tells a story that I had no idea existed, and I'm so glad now that I get to like have that knowledge and also be like. 
anybody who doesn't watch this movie, you can pull the card on and be like, hey, you know Tetris? You know how that shit happened? Yeah. Uh, did, did it make you want to play Tetris, though? No. It didn't make me want to play Tetris. No, definitely not. It made me want to... What did it make me want to do? It made me want to go to Tokyo. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely didn't make me want to go to Russia. That's didn't for sure. I, yeah, it wasn't Nothing like a has super, ever made me want to go to Russia. It wasn't like a super make you want to go to Russia <laughs> movie. Although they had, a, I'm not a nightclub guy, famously, but like the nightclub did seem fun. It was like an underground nightclub. It yeah, seemed like a, a good but it was time. very well attended. Yeah, it had some John Wick vibes to it. They sang uh, "Final Countdown." Yeah, Pretty they good. were they were all really really into it. Um. Tom, not the best movie for Taron Egerton's look. I thought he was awesome, and I thought he looked great. Well, I, 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 he he looked good. He was dressed very poorly. He wore yeah. gigantic suits, which were, were a reflection of what would have been worn around that time. But boy, his like big bulking walk with yeah. the big huge suit was so goofy. <laughs> but his, but I mean. Maybe it was by a contrast or something, but like his face looked awesome. Yeah, and when I mean, he looked the mustache great with the looked mustache, awesome. With him. Yeah, it was. It, this is a good movie. I would recommend. Yeah. see people see it and then to talk to me about it. Uh, big warning. Um, the my experience with this movie, the first like twenty minutes or so, I watched, and something happened with my with my Apple TV. There was a bug that uh, made the subtitles not appear on screen and in like the first 20 minutes of this movie you've got people speaking japanese you've got people speaking russian you've got like a bunch of different languages and i thought they made the the choice to not include subtitles and just make you try to figure out what's happening on these conversations based on contextual clues that is not the case uh, i accidentally hit a button on my remote that exited the movie and I went back in and I was like, whoa, what the fuck? This has subtitles? And it re so I had to rewatch like the first 20 minutes. That movie brought to you by Babel. That's Learn right. the languages, yeah. dummy. Mm. Goddamn. Don't make the movie do everything for you. No free ads, but there's one for you. Yeah, Babel. Uh, uh, one thing that I did want to discuss on this episode. Oh, yes. Not not what you're getting at. I want to do a quick little discussion. I know what, I know what he wants to discuss. No, you don't. Yes. What do you think? Uh, Andor. Yes. Uh, no. We've um, we've dipped our toe into the "Am I the asshole?" discussions before. You. So I'm not. I'm gonna be the way that you were to me about Andor. You have dipped your toe into the "Am I the asshole?" This guy. I, I'm not an "Am I the asshole?" guy. We. Yeah. Okay. And I just don't care about it. Okay. But let's do this one. Yeah, this yeah. One some was, of them are good. This one was. This one was fun. Um. And uh, like the stakes are very low. And it's it's like a fun discussion. Uh, the title is, Am I the Asshole Because I bought I Brought a Bottle of Ranch into a Restaurant? Last night, I went to dinner with Michael, this person's boyfriend. It was our third date, and he took me to one of his favorite restaurants. It was a hole-in-the-wall Polish-Hungarian place. We ordered our food, and he ordered a sampler plate so I could try different things. There's very few things I don't eat with ranch. I just like it, and it helps me make some things easier to eat, so I always have it with my meals. When we got our food, I asked for some ranch. The waiter said they didn't have any and offered to bring out some kind of sour cream and dill sauces. I tried them, and they just weren't the same. I told Michael I'd be right back. I took my wallet, and I left the restaurant. I had seen a convenience store close by when arriving, so I went and bought a bottle of ranch and came back. Michael looked shocked but didn't say anything and ate his food. The food was great, and we got some conversation going when the waiter came over and said outside food wasn't allowed. I said dressing isn't outside food, and they didn't have what I needed to enjoy my meal. I didn't want to ruin the evening, so I took it out to my car and returned. When we finished and left, Michael thanked me for coming out with him but said it was really off-putting that I had to leave and go buy a bottle of ranch dressing instead of going one meal without it. I told him I wouldn't have had to do that if they had had ranch dressing or any dressings like a normal restaurant. He didn't walk me to my car or anything and just left. I went home and told my roommate about my date and his attitude and she asked me if I was being serious. She thinks I had bad etiquette and was embarrassed and embarrassed Michael to the point where he probably was going to stop talking to me. I don't think what I did was really all that bad. It was a condiment, not an entire meal from someplace else. Was I wrong for what I did? This is why I don't like Am I the Asshole? Because I, I think that this person should bring their story 
to their friends and their friends should shoot them straight like her, her roommate did. I don't want to call this person who I've never met an asshole. That is nightmare behavior to me. Yes. That yeah. is nightmare behavior. It, I don't me. think it's asshole behavior. I think it's like you you got you got to figure you, you got to figure it you, out. You just can't do that. Like that I That is you, legitimately an addiction. You if you can't go one meal without ranch dressing, you are addicted to ranch dressing. But they they can't I, just the thinking of I'm going to leave this person. And I I have on um I I I've like taken a call on a date before. It was forever ago though and like I I like was away from the person. I left the person alone for like 10 15 minutes and felt bad about that. You should you're like on a date. Yeah, but, but it was like something that I had to do right. and I was not taking this date I clearly was not taking this date very seriously. It but wasn't you, like but I you was can like take oh, time to make a phone call. I was like, "Oh, I have to do this thing. Ah shit, whatever." This person didn't need right. to go and leave and get, get that's yeah i i i was gonna say i hate this person but i <laughs> you won't call him an asshole I but you'll hate, say you hate i them. hate am i the asshole for <laughs> this reason Th- this this should be solved with friends and a therapist and i don't want to know of people who are explaining why it's a good thing this person did but if somebody if, but but like swap out swap out ranch dressing for like beer and say like this person they this restaurant didn't have beer so the person left and went and got a six pack and brought it back to have because they can't enjoy a meal without beer you would absolutely say that that person was an alcoholic right but it's fucking it's fucking ranch dressing man i'm maybe it's cuz i'm not a ranch person but there's not or maybe it's because i don't have any like severe addictions i think i just think it's so weird and maybe even if it's okay that's just not for me and i'm not gonna be, I'm, that that doesn't suit me in my rock and roll lifestyle <laughs> if you abandon somebody on a date for like 10 to 15 minutes i don't think they did they say a time do they say like 10 to 15 minutes but if you abandon somebody on they a said date they saw a cvs and yes. they, it's probably a one floorer they probably got <laughs> yes. like two employees working there and they're both pharmacists you True. know how that is and they'd Probably were like, I'm trying to pay with cash. Exactly. <laughs> it took an hour. Yeah. And if you leave, if you leave somebody on a date and like exit the building, exit the date to go do something, it should be an emergency. Yeah. There needs to be some reason. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm crawling out of my skin <laughs> thinking about, A, like, is this even real? Is this... Uh, oh, that can't be made up. I... That can't be made up. It's it just none. It just none of that suits what I think etiquette should be. <laughs> so then you are on. No, but I'm not. I don't think this person's an asshole. I'm just my answer to the, that whole thing is no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Just no. Like uh, if 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 I were the roommate and they're like, okay, so then I go and I the get roommate the had the right blah the, blah. The roommate had the right reaction. It was like, yeah, are you serious? Like, you can't do that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Do you think this person gets a call back from Michael? If I'm Michael, I wouldn't make that call. On a third date, that's a severe red flag, uh, especially when you bring it to the internet and then it goes viral. I would definitely yeah, not talk so to I, you. I hate everything about it. I, I hate everything about it. That Then you it becomes a, you take it to the internet and everything. I think if I was Michael, I'd be more mad that it was then became like internet fodder and podcast fodder. Yeah, I'd be fodder. like, and then you yeah, put it right. on the... Like, you are so sure that you are correct in doing this, that you brought it to the internet for, to ask for like second opinions after your roommate told you? Yeah. The, the, it, the whole internet thing, I think, elevates it to where like, Michael, get the fuck out of there. Um, yeah. So I, the, the other thing that I wanted to talk about this case, I don't know how this came up. I really don't. Oh, uh, because I was watching Cheers. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching Cheers, and it, uh, it brought up the idea that we should talk about our most proud lies, mm. the 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 lies that we've told. That y- y- lying is. We've had this discussion. Like lying is bad. Yeah. But not all lies are created equal, and there are some lies that you could be like, "Damn, that was I, that was a good one." I'm kind of so, out of the game, but. I was, as a younger man, I was very big into 
harmless lies Mm -hmm. like small things that are totally inconsequential yes why would he include that detail yeah it didn't matter like nobody is benefiting from it but just a fun little rush as so we're going to discuss some of our personal most proud lies and as we'll see when i get into it some of some lies can be like like a like a nice little centerpiece yeah like a talking a talking point when you when i was on a pretty good run like a couple years ago because I, I I tried to bring back lying. Yeah, I remember and, that. And uh, I forget I got you like you twice hit, in yeah, a row, and, and then was, you got but then yeah. you hit back big, and yeah. I forget what you got me with. But Same. I was like, damn, <laughs> lies do be hurt. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> so the cheers tie in here is that um, I want to say like about a month or two ago, I was watching Cheers with Ellen, and just out of nowhere, I decided to lie. And tell Ellen that uh, Woody Harrelson sings the Cheers theme song. (laughs) And the reason why he ended up being cast on the show after Coach died was because he sang the, 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 the theme song. And they were like, hey, this guy's cute and young. Why don't we give him a shot? He seems like a, a nice charismatic guy. We can just throw him into the show. And... What a fucking lie. And that, it worked. And if you listen to the Cheers theme song, you can truly convince yourself that Woody Harrelson sang that song. Side note, you know what Twitter account I hate? And you fucking like it. It's an Instagram account, actually. They're like, ruin a song by uh, showing who it sounds oh, like. Yeah. And they show a picture of somebody. And it's like, this is like dumbass psychology 101. You listen to it in that person's voice. So then you say, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. the, the killer's thing with Jerry Seinfeld. It doesn't fucking sound like Jerry Seinfeld. It does. Find a new slant. That one, I, that one is the only one that I really liked and then I followed that account and it jumped the shark very quickly. I saw it and I was like I'm good this is going to make me mad. This is going to make me mad. <laughs> oh, fuck off. This makes me so mad and people from time to time will send that one to me. Yeah. And I'm like, folks, it makes me mad. <laughs> Don't send it to me. Um Woody Harrelson does sing the Cheers theme. That's song, a great that that is a great lie. Like I I would feel very very good about that yeah, lie. I do. Uh, I convinced you that there was no such thing as bunnies yeah, and that That's... it was just like an Easter bunny thing and that it was like Jurassic Park where like, yeah, raptors are real, but like velociraptors are a thing for Jurassic Park. So I forget exactly how, but there was like velociraptors a Velociraptors of... aren't a thing for Jurassic Park, are they? I believe so. That's not true. Are you lying during the lying segment? Uh, well, this I made up the CVS thing. So did you? No, yeah, about the two did floors. Did you? Yeah, that's one of the lies. No way. Yeah, I lied about that's that. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad I was able to, to to debunk it in a way. Yeah, you. Uh, let's see, Veloci- uh, Velociraptor is the first. Uh, no, it's w- a real w- thing. One of the I forget. One of the dinosaurs is made up in Jurassic Park. Okay. Uh, is it the one that they engineer and is like the, literally the plot of the movie? Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's one that like people say all the time. Uh, okay. Shit. Um, I, I'm not going to. I was going to say Velociraptors. I've been hearing about those since I was like four years old. So there's no chance. Yeah, that Jurassic... But Jurassic Park was out when you were four years old. Yeah, around there. Yeah, true. Uh, but no, they, they're, I've seen them in like books and shit too. I, I've read a lot of dinosaur books in my day. Yeah. Um, that's uh that's a pretty good one the the bunny one mm-hmm. um here's one that i uh i carried on for quite some time in my college days uh when i was in college i used to tell people at parties that i played the kid who uh acted as young matt damon in the departed nice and most people believed that and it turned into like conversation pieces on the second time that I ran into that person, because many times they'd be like, Hey, I looked it up. You're not that kid. Oh, <laughs> and, that's awesome. And then we'd have a conversation at the next party. And like, sometimes I like made friends because of that lie. Uh, if I were dealing with drunk people at bars who were talking to me and that were, that were nice enough, but it was like, this isn't going to, this isn't a real interaction. It's total empty calories. None of this matters. If uh, they ever asked uh, what I did, my answer would be, I'm a disgraced weatherman. Uh, I'm a disgraced weatherman. I don't want to talk about it, and then continue the conversation. And sometimes people would be like, "You're a weatherman," and I'd be like, "Used to be. Uh, not, not right now. What do you do?" I'm a disgraced weatherman. My son uh, was involved in a hit and run, and I tried to cover it up. 
to your honor joke. That's your honor. Yeah. <laughs> It would be um, a way worse show if, <laughs> if he was a weatherman. And the only way like, that he could save him. Nobody ever respected you. What does he have to do for Michael Stuhlbarg as a weatherman to save uh, his his own life? <laughs> he has to uh, he has to say that it's raining so that Stuhlbarg can go use the golf course on his own. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw Stuhlbarg golf- golfing in your honor. Uh, a big one here. This could be argued that it was slightly harmful or... Uh, uh, a little bit m- more consequential. I used to Photoshop my report cards when I was in high school. Oh, Photoshop wasn't around when I was in high school, but I would do that for. Ch- actually, I probably wouldn't have done that. I'm I don't. I actually. Honest, Abe. I think that I was. Um, I was famously poor in high school, nice. and I don't know if I had the Photoshop acumen, so I didn't actually use Photoshop. Paint. I Gimshot? think I. U- I think I used Paint. Wow. Yeah, where you just do the square around like the a or a minus and then you just copy drag it down to whatever subject you're not doing so hot in and then you print it that's fantastic it was very easy uh oh that does remind me uh speaking of like photoshop and stuff the when you were talking about the the i said i had a great idea for a website podcast yes i didn't have a great idea for a website podcast <laughs> amazing lie yeah it's a very i'm a little lie. disappointed <laughs> yeah i am hurt by that i was looking forward to ending this episode and finding out what br- brilliant idea you had but the truest lie i did have that idea i wrote it down i what do have fuck? that idea <laughs> yeah. This is this is just this it's just levels to this shit. This just screams that you didn't think of any proud lies except for the last one, and then you just made them up on the fly. Which honestly, I have to respect. I, I was going to have lies by the time we did this <laughs> segment, so I'm all good. There you go. Uh, yeah, those are the big three that I had. So pretty proud of those. Uh, Patreon people, get on Patreon. Yeah, let us, us know some... what your most proud lies are. Also on the Patreon, I'm probably going to put a playlist there because. I started to make you a playlist the other day and then stopped because I want to I, I I've been getting back lightly into the uh the pot uh just as needed from time to time and I was the uh, I'd taken an edible and was listening to the Beatles and it was terrific and I started to put on songs that I knew would hit a little better when you're just like slightly a little more connected to it yeah so i start to make a pl- i was like oh this is how i can get pete into the beatles i'll make him a small playlist of songs and say hey smoke some pot turn stuff off and just like listen to this i guarantee you you'll get into the beatles and i made a playlist and i didn't finish it probably has like maybe five or six songs and then i stopped and i was like no because if I give this to him, then I'm going to have to watch like Andor or something. And I just don't have the time to watch Andor, so I'm not going to do it. Well, you'll be happy to hear that I I gave the Beatles another shot uh, this weekend. No, you're lying. No, I actually did. No, you're not. I, I didn't. Um, but you, I did. It, it, it's the master. <laughs> uh, but I did give uh, a music artist that I have never, never like like consciously gone out of my way to listen to. I gave them my first shot if you say this so. weekend. No, I did. I want to see if you can guess who it is. Kansas. It's, it's somebody that we've been talking. It's not Kansas. It's somebody that we've been talking about somewhat uh, over the past couple months. St. Paul and the Broken Bones. That has never been brought up over the past couple months. <laughs> had, I guarantee you they, the guys in the band <laughs> okay. probably say what time is our show. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, fair. Uh, music, uh, someone who's been, uh, you listen to the music of Tim Heidecker. I did not, no. Uh, we have gone a little while without talking about Tim Heidecker. Yeah, not if I have anything to Think say award about it. season. Award season. Uh, muse, uh, Lady Gaga. No. Did you listen to The Shallow Lalo? N- no. Why did you do that? <laughs> Why did you do that? The worst song in the history. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a smoke so, some pot and listen to Lady Gaga God. playlist, and it's "Why Did You Do That" 15 times. I will like jump out of a window. No, I listened to Elvis Presley. Oh, no cap. Yeah, no cap, son. Whoa, it, and it was lit, dog. What's uh, what songs did you listen to, boy? Uh, <laughs> uh. I listen to fuck. What was I? I don't know the. I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with the the song title names yet. Um, oh damn, that's pussy popping you, on a handstand. <laughs> fuck off. Uh, but you you want to know how I got there? Like in a weird roundabout way, 
I sort of listened. I, I listened, came across uh, Orville Peck, mm-hmm. and I've, I never listened to that guy. And that guy just sounds like he's cosplaying as Elvis. Yeah, not for me. I've I've tried. Yeah, I've seen. It them. seems like a little bit uh, too like yeah wanking motion. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not for me. Um, so I listen. I listen to Suspicious Minds, Great song. which is a shit house. Total fucking leased vehicle yes um caught in a trap can't walk out why because uh, i love you too much baby that's right if i can dream live from yeah. the the comeback special mm-hmm. boy he was into that at you the want, end of that song you want good elvis i mean a lot of elvis is good but pretty much any of his live stuff is awesome so i think i am quite on the track you want me to, to make be you an, an elvis, elvis playlist? guy i make you an elvis I, playlist it, yeah i would very much appreciate that and i think it, it, that absolutely came out of fucking nowhere because even when i watched the movie i wasn't like yeah i like i i know of elvis yeah. and like the music is it seems good but like i'm not a person that typically likes like super old music or whatever mm-hmm. i like was very into it oh this is good i'm going to let you and aid you in getting into elvis because you know who started making music after elvis the beatles so if you like elvis and you get into that shit and you're like okay now you have the con the context of like this is what the cool shit was at the time and then these fucking guys smoked some pot and did this like the jump in just like the 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 language that pop music spoke went from such a like there there were just a lot more walls and then the beatles and pot changed everything like singles back in the day i was discussing this with my therapist the other day no cap (laughs) singles back in the day it was like an unwritten rule had to be about love like the the topic had to be love that was going to play that riz. was going to sell yeah. it had to be about the riz. had to have riz yeah and if you, I mean because if you're talking about other stuff then that is not pussy popping on a handstand no definitely not you know that song no <laughs> I think it's like a ludicrous song <laughs> insane uh, but uh, <laughs> well so, we know the time we know can we name this episode pussy popping on a handstand sure so uh, no a lot of songs uh, they, they were just all love songs and then Bob Dylan came out you know the song like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan yeah by the Rolling Stones yes Bob, Bob Dylan, Dylan in the Rolling in his band the Rolling Stones <laughs> came out with uh, like a Rolling Stone by the Wallflowers and that that's a song that's just like talking to somebody and that was a hit so Paul McCartney was like what these things don't have to be out love. Do you know the song Paperback Writer no. by the Beatles? That's the first song that I put on the Smoke Pot and Listen to the Beatles playlist. It is a whole ass song about like, yo, you know what I want to do? Write books. And <laughs> all of the lyrics are just like, yo, pl- like, like, what do you think of this book I just wrote? <laughs> all the lyrics, uh, dear sir, madam, would you read my book? It took me years to write. Would you have a look? It's like, and all the stuff is like, yo, like, this is fucking book i wrote like i'm not getting any money for it but shit's pussy popping on a handstand but that shit was pussy popping on a handstand and that was a huge huge hit and that blew stuff open and that's why you have like there's no vineyard nights without uh no vineyard nights too actually would have happened yeah that's the, a love song yeah true uh it's a real that's a real pipeline beatles straight to vineyard no nights. and then like i was th- thinking about it like the pinball uh, the, the the who made a whole ass song about like you ever see how good that kid is at pinball? And for a whole song, they're like, The blind kid sure plays so a mean I pinball. So I walked in. He's playing pinball well. And he is crushing it. <laughs> and he's blind. And he's blind? Yeah. Is deaf, dumb, and blind? Is that an okay thing to say? I, I imagine not. Dumb, why like, why I not? Because like, just like the dumb? dumb part? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I never understood. Like even as a child, I was like, why are we calling that person dumb? Yeah, I was like, from everything I hear, Helen Keller, like, kind of had it going yeah, on. Yeah, kind of smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um should we talk uh should we tell people about the idea that we had for Patreon? Oh, there there's been talk. Yeah. I I I think I would do this only on the Patreon because and then I had another idea. This isn't a lie. I had a great idea off of that, but we'll just leave it at uh just like uh pot episodes and we'll do something 
while doing pot, and then that's Patreon content. I thought, yeah. The, oh, I'm realizing, by the way, this is uh, Chris Gethard did this, but he doesn't have that show anymore. Oh, the, so. uh, the he did the edible. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. edible roulette. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that, and you were invited to that, weren't you? We were invited to that. I don't think so. We had him on the podcast, though. No, but remember, there was like a, a the, the, his PR person was like, hey, we're filming this, uh, we're filming an edible roulette episode of the Gethard, or the Chris Gethard, Gethard show. Ah. He's going to fly in on a helicopter. They're going to take edibles, and it's going to be a very fun time. You guys should come. It Was it in New York? It was in New York City. Ah, uh, now I would do that. Right. We should have done that. But yeah, there's, there's ideas that could be had, and I feel like, I don't know if it's like a five, ten minute video of us doing whatever. It'd be w- within the the rules, but I feel like that that's like a great example of Patreon content. Yes, yeah. Where yeah. it's not like it's not like a job, but it's it would be it's good th- for it's a million looser. different reasons. It's it's has looser regulations. Imagine this conversation with even more pot. Yeah, yeah. Here's air. From director Ben Affleck comes Air, a sports drama about Nike's courting of Michael Jordan in 1984. The film stars Matt Damon as Sonny Vaccaro, marking the first time Affleck has directed Damon. The two have collaborated as actors or writers on several films, most notably winning an Oscar for writing Good Will Hunting. Air features a loaded supporting cast of Viola Davis, Chris Tucker, Jason Bateman, Chris Messina, and Marlon Wayans. The movie runs one hour and 52 minutes off the top i'll say we're affleck guys oh, he yeah. got plastic surgery to look like matt damon <laughs> there are going to be some biases here this movie i think is a very very well performed witty great sports dramedy that has grown on me since i've seen it despite it being a very safe movie. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, very safe, very uh, inoffensive is is a good way to put it. It's it's very enjoyable and it's very accessible. Like you don't have to be a sports fan to enjoy this movie. And I really think that my big takeaway from from this one was it's a cool genre of movie. Like in my own head, where like when I first hear that it's going to happen, I'm like, I don't know if this movie needs to happen. I don't know if this story needs to be told. And then the movie very emphatically proves you wrong because I think that this story is certainly worth telling and I think they do a very good job of telling it. Ford versus Ferrari walked safely so Air could run safely. It's the, They're both sports movies where you don't need to be super into the sport. You know what a, you know what Ford is. You know what the stakes would be of like, hey, we're making the Mustang or whatever and trying to go up against Ferrari. Like, you know all the, the key things. If you're not a big basketball fan, you know who Michael Jordan is. If you're not a sneakerhead, you know what Air Jordans are and mm-hmm. you've seen them all over the place. And if you are really into those things, as is also the case with Ford versus Ferrari, if you're super into basketball and the NBA draft and sneakers and all that stuff, they get plenty nerdy yeah, for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, like they, they're true enough to the fans that the fans will enjoy it They're, and i wouldn't even call it fan service some of it is does feel like a little bit of fan service and nostalgia service in a way like it's very nostalgia heavy but it's smart enough and knowledgeable enough that it's not a turn off for those people it has the exact tone of a ben affleck directed dramedy starring matt damon like it's quirky and, and like yeah. J- jason bateman also plays a big part i would say it's, where... i would say it's more of a, a damon bateman movie than it is a damon affleck movie it's very sharp very well done script from alex convery it's what i would think these people would do every funny beat of it i'm like that's matt damon and ben affleck shout out to them for having so many funny scenes and big scenes take place on the phone, which I would think it's a lot easier to get people in the same room and get them to react off each other. Maybe it's the quality of actors, but Chris Messina has some great scenes on the phone. Matt Damon has some great scenes on the phone. Everybody in this movie was awesome. Most notably though, award season starts this year with Viola Davis in this movie, I think. I agree. Yeah. And then like her biggest her biggest scene was on the phone mm-hmm. and it was like very, very important to the movie. And if that didn't work, uh it it wouldn't have held the same like, okay, this is a story that deserves to be told, uh, feel to it. She she nails it. She's so good. I know that like the you know, they asked Michael Jordan like 
who do you want to play your mom? And they said, uh, he said Viola Davis. And uh, the joke that they made was, that's like asking, like, hey, get Michael ba- Michael Jordan for my pickup basketball team. Which, I, I, I know they're trying to sell a movie, but as movie fans and following Viola Davis in recent years, one Best Supporting Actress in 2016, it's cool to hear Ben Affleck be like, the best the biggest achievement in this movie (laughs) was i got viola davis to let me tell her what to do it's so funny that like ben affleck and matt damon who are like a-list stars in their own right were like starstruck that they got viola davis to do their movie i think that like it becoming cool to like dog ben affleck i think that that's never going to really leave him in a good and productive way like i think he just really prioritizes like let's do the best shit we can do because Maybe even if it's really good, they're going to be mean to us about it. So let's just do the best thing that we can. And Viola Davis is part of that. As I said, Chris Messina is great in this. Uh, Chris Tucker uh, grew on me over the course of the movie. He plays uh, his his role very, very big. Part of it also just might be we don't see Chris Tucker that often. The guy only acts in a movie like once every like whenever he wants really he'll yeah go, like, he'll go, like every 10 years if he wants yeah his character was a bit heavy-handed especially towards the end but like it's it works because i feel like a lot of things in this movie are um i don't know if i would say like exaggerated but they do like they seem big mm-hmm. and uh, like especially the portrayal of phil knight by ben affleck that was one of my bigger takeaways is that like did Phil Knight sign off on this? Because, like, they kind of turn him into a cartoon character in this movie, and he's very goofy, but, like, he doesn't come off as a bad guy. He just comes off as, like, a very eccentric guy, and they make a lot of jokes at his expense, and, like, a movie that is centered around Nike, it does not come off as, like, an infomercial. It does not come off as propaganda for Nike. It comes off as, like, hey, there were real people involved in this huge thing for a gigantic corporation. More my issue was merely that Ben Affleck played Phil Knight and the physical portrayal of him. It is impossible, and Ben Affleck's great in this movie, but Phil knowing... Knight's just a little guy. Knowing what Phil Knight looks like and knowing that Ben Affleck by his own doing, is very broad-shouldered. I Just like some of the shots of him, I was like, man, he would just kick Sonny's ass right now, I guess, <laughs> if they really looked like this. On them making fun of Phil Knight and making fun of Nike, I think it's so important they did that because while they get off a lot of jokes and it's easy to laugh at Phil Knight and Nike in this movie, that's also probably just depicting a fledgling corporation. And... Right. We were born, I was born in the late 80s. You were born in the 90s, I believe. We both grew up in the 90s. We have not experienced a time in which Nike wasn't cool. And I think that it's so important. This movie doesn't work if they don't establish that, like, Nike isn't cool. They even have the Sunny character ask, like, man, why aren't we cool? Like, they really have to drive home that these people are failing. They're a laughing stock. Nobody really believes in them. They, they really dedicate, like, the first act of the movie establishing the context of, of what's happening and they do it really well, which is to say like Nike is a su- successful corporation that has an impact on sports, but it does not have the imprint that you know on basketball. So like, I think they did a really good job of, of really establishing that early on. One of the questions, I guess two of the questions that I, I wanted to ask in terms of detractors or cons or like concerns that people have had with this movie did the lack of michael jordan like the lack of a a character playing him because there is you know michael jordan's presence in this movie and there is an actor that plays him but no lines right like one line but like never any screen time really uh did that impact you did it take you away from the movie at all and number two did like the lack of the stakes uh impact you or take you away from the movie the michael jordan thing was distracting only in points when everybody would get together yeah and everybody would go straight to dolores jordan who if you read or hear any recollection of the story is how it went like this was about like you're you're courting her and she's calling all the shots and this makes me want to run back to another Viola Davis moment in a a second. So like there is 
some plausible deniability there where it's like, no, like when they all got out of the limo, people did rush over to her and then like the kid just happens to be there. So th th those were the only points in which I was distracted by it and maybe asked myself a uh, question or two. There's a t there's a point in the movie where they also like with a wink and a nudge acknowledge that there isn't a Michael Jordan yeah. character where they ask him a question and he just and doesn't, he doesn't answer. answer. So I... Th you could it's say that's kind awkward. of like a cop out, but I thought it was kind of funny that they put that in there. And your other question was: Did like the lack of stakes? Because you know how it works yes. out. Did was that? Because uh, they specifically addressed it at one point, and when they did, I was like, I'm very glad they did that because I had not considered that. Because as you're watching it, you know how it ends. They get Michael Jordan. They make a bajillion dollars. He's like a gigantic star. Right. Yeah. We all know how it goes. But there was a good scene in which Jason Bateman, who is Michael Bluth in this movie, as he is in pretty much everything, but we love him, sits down with Sonny and explains to him like, hey, here's how this all affects me. Because a lot. this is a classic... You can't do this. Everyone will think you're crazy. Ah, oh, corporate will never, the boss will never go for it. It's one of those movies. When you know that it ends with everybody winning, it's good to be reminded that there were some, some, some heads in the guillotine. Yeah. And like the scene that you're talking about with Bateman and, and like where he like sits down with Sonny and he's like, listen, I'm, I'm on your, I'm in your corner here, but here's what happens if this doesn't work out and it's going to fuck me over. And like, that was very, very important to the movie and very, very important to Jason Bateman's character because like, you need to be reminded that they're like, they don't know that this is going to work out and they are taking a chance. And like with the viewer experience, you've got the, the hindsight or, or like the benefit of knowing that everything's going to go just fine guys. Um, but like, I do think that it was the biggest detractor for me in terms of the movie is just that like they spend so much time like, you know, oh, this isn't going to work, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, you know that it is. And like, even when it does, there isn't like much of a grand payoff. And that was like the that was the one thing that I kind of I don't know how you fix it. Right, I, I don't know say. how you fix it. But like it was the one thing that just kind of felt a little off to me in this movie and it does feel like a board it, it, we both in different ways said inoffensive safe whatever after we saw the movie and when i talk to people who have seen it everyone kind of agrees with that but i would reckon ben affleck and matt damon would be like yeah but like there's nothing it, you can do like right. you, you simply know how, how it ends so and again, it, the story is worth telling. Right. It's just more of you you watch the the process. Uh Matt Maher, who plays Peter Moore, who designed the shoe, yes. was awesome. He, he was always great. pops up in Affleck and Damon things. And he if the show didn't securely belong to Viola Davis, I would do some like stole the show talk with him. Everybody in it was really, really good. I want to bring up the 80s vibe and the 80s aesthetic because there's a it's a major pro for me and it's also a bit of a con i think that aesthetically this does 80s better than maybe anything i've seen do the 80s every character and the whole thing just felt so 80s in how it looked now the music okay was relentless they did not let up with playing an 80s rock song every two seconds in this movie and that to me is honestly the biggest attraction and i love all the songs but every time somebody wasn't speaking in this movie i felt like they were just, you motor in and i'm like okay like got it <laughs> they also like explicitly address like uh born in the usa and there's a whole scene and like uh mm -hmm. speech about it and it ends up being a a, pl a plot point in the movie so pretty heavy ended with that you're right a little book reporty that was i will say a little distracting and like this is maybe a credit to the costume design i was waiting for the scene of phil knight in the tracksuit the entire movie mm. and it doesn't come until the very end of the movie yeah and i spent like i was in my head being like when are they doing the suit like when are the when am i seeing him in this iconic look and it just it was it was i was so 
drawn to it and I was so um, uh, like I was so impatient with it that it was taking me out of the movie because I wanted to see it. What if they made it a post credit scene? <laughs> that would have been mad. That would have been so mad. That would have been awesome. Give you a good movie and then hit you with that uh, awesome post credit scene. Uh, let's get into positives and negatives of the film. I would say positives, excellent cast, an extremely easy watch. This will be very rewatchable. It's a sports movie that sports fans will love. Nerdy, not nerdy, you're going to be into it. Well, I, I mean, I would say like the big pro there is like it's a sports movie for, for everybody. everybody. Yeah. Nailed it. Uh, in terms of cons, uh, does feel like a lack of stakes and payoff. And there's a lot of Ben Affleck's feet. Oh, yeah. Well, this was famously directed by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, I agree in putting like the, the safeness in the uh, the negative section. The lack of Michael Jordan, I would say, is distracting for yeah. brief instances, although I want to almost put it in like smushed font because when you see lack of Michael Jordan distracting, you'll be like, so you're thinking the whole time, where's Michael Jordan? You're really no, not. No, it's just a little awkward at points. Yeah, and uh, I put the, the music dominates. That, I would put that as a negative. Letterboxd, where are you going? I am in the... I'm at four right now. I, I reserve the right to maybe be a three and a half. So I'm four, reserving the right to go up to four and a half. I, okay. think, this, I think the next time I watch it, I'm going to like it a lot more. That is air, friends.